Welcome back, friends. Today we're going to be talking about bycatch because I just saw a news story that has absolutely rocked me. This year, ground fish trawlers operating in Alaska accidentally caught a record number of killer whales in their nets. Until now, it was pretty rare for an orca to be trapped in fishing gear. I'm KP, a marine biologist with over a decade of experience working with marine mammals. The incidents occurred in the Bering Sea slash Aleutian Islands region of Western Alaska. The killer whales in this region fall under the Marine Mammal Protection Act, which requires vessel owners or operators to report all interactions with these animals. That Marine Mammal Protection Act also requires trawl vessels to carry two federally contracted observers who collect information about bycatch. According to their observations, 10 orca were caught in fishing gear so far this year, and only one was able to be released alive. That's a dramatic spike up from five orcas who were caught in the same region between the years 2016 and 2020. Five orcas over four years versus 10 this year alone. Orcas are extremely intelligent marine mammals. They're also innovative, especially when it comes to feeding techniques. You've probably seen videos of orcas coordinating to wave wash seals off of ice flows. Orcas imitate and learn from each other through a process called social learning. I talked about this in my video on the Gladys orca attacking boats off the Iberian Peninsula. The juveniles are actually teaching the even younger individuals um, to carry on this behavior. Essentially, these killer whales have learned to take advantage of commercial fisheries. A researcher with the nonprofit North Gulf Oceanic Society spent a week on a trawler in May with a hydrophone, recording killer whales that were making clicking sounds associated with foraging as the net was being towed. This indicates that the whales were either pursuing fish in front of the net or worse, following the fish into the net. The obvious reason why orcas would do this is because it's easier to let the trawlers round up the fish rather than having to do it themselves. The less obvious reason is that many of these orca pods are actually starving. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, overfishing and habitat loss have decreased the amount of prey available for some killer whales. Without enough prey, killer whales experience decreased reproductive rates and increased mortality rates. This is why NOAA lists lack of food as the leading threat to orca populations. This lack of food could explain why the orcas are engaged in this behavior that is extremely risky, as the 10 caught this year clearly show. Now, 10 whales might not sound like a lot, although it sounds like an awful lot to me, especially when there are an estimated 50,000 orcas in oceans worldwide, and about 1,200 killer whales living in Alaskan waters. But these numbers can be a little deceiving. While the 50,000 orcas are currently classified as the same species, they are all separate breeding populations. Each population has its own language, social structure, food preference, hunting behavior, essentially their own culture, for a lack of a better word. This culture is passed down from the older generations to the younger ones through the social learning that we talked about. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we have resident bigs and offshore populations. The offshore orcas, as their name suggests, live offshore in massive pods that can number in the hundreds. They almost exclusively eat shark livers. Bigs prey on marine mammals, like seals, sea lions, and other whales. They live in much smaller pods, usually only around five individuals, and most of these pods are extremely migratory. Resident orcas almost exclusively eat fish. They're smaller than the big killer whales, they are much more vocal, and they have a much smaller range. Based on DNA analysis, it is believed that the resident and big killer whales haven't interbred in over 700,000 years. And that is just one piece of the growing body of evidence that these different breeding populations are actually distinct subspecies and probably should be treated as such. The 10 killer whales caught in fishing nets this year were all resident killer whales, so let's focus on that population. Resident killer whales live in close-knit family groups known as matrilines. A typical matriline consists of the elder matriarch, her offspring, 
and the offspring of her daughters. Essentially, male and female orcas typically stay with their moms for life. They travel together, forage together, socialize together, and rest together. There are around 30 mattress lines in Alaska, and each pod numbers fewer than 40 animals. Each mattress line has a unique dialect of vocalizations, hunting methods, and essentially their own culture. However, the NOAA currently manages all of Alaska's resident killer whales as a single stock, even though there is evidence that the resident killer whales in the Bering Sea are distinct and separate from the resident killer whales in eastern Alaska. Losing 10 animals out of a population of 50,000 isn't going to have that big of an impact, but losing even one animal out of a population of 30 to 40, that could have devastating impacts, especially for species like killer whales, who have a long lifespan and a slow reproductive rate. Is there anything that we can do about this? And the answer is yes, there is a lot that we can do, starting with changing the way we manage killer whale populations. The NOAA really needs to treat each killer whale population as an individual stock, something it already does for the southern resident killer whales and the AT1 bigs. From there, we can strengthen our regulations, because this behavior of preying in front of commercial fishing nets isn't unique to the Alaskan orcas. From 2011 to 2020, Norwegian fishing vessels caught over 100 killer whales in their nets. Almost all of these orcas were released alive, and mortality from that Norwegian fishery is extremely low. That's because Norway implemented laws that prioritize the lives of whales, even if it means opening fishing nets and releasing all of their catch. And that topic of larger policy changes uh, leads me to individual changes that you and I can make in our everyday lives. We can take advantage of resources like Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch and eat responsibly. These resources are easy to use and they're free. They even have apps that you can download straight to your phone. I'll post links to those resources down in the descriptions below, as well as a place that you can write to NOAA asking for more strict regulations on how we classify killer whales and our fishing practices. As always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and let me know what you think down in the comments. This year, ground fish trawlers, trawlers, that same Marine Mammal Protection Act also requires trawl vessel, trawl, trawl is going to be a hard one for me. A researcher with the nonprofit North Gulf Oceanic Society, oh, so close. A researcher with the nonprofit North, North, the North Trawlers, something it already does for the Southern residents. You mind. You have no culture.